this a template for the future of our deer parks? No, it's not very British. <laughs> Lots of deer and antelope from all over the world. Out with the traditional monoculture, in with multicultural modern thinking. Rather than have, you know, a thousand of one species, red, fallow, whatever it might be, as long as you have the right uh, ratio of male and females, you can have all these species together. Our trip to Watatunga Game Reserve in Norfolk was originally planned to test the quality of the iray thermal range. We all know what a fallow looks like through a thermal, but can you identify a bongo at 120 metres? Bless fuck. <laughs> were, you, were you right? Can we put some money on this? No! <laughs> the hat I'm absolutely loving. I'm a, I'm a big fan of pith helmets in general. And yeah, this. Yeah, you didn't seem that surprised when I mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, can I bring one of my own? <laughs> <laughs> this, this one coming from you, this, this will have a special place in my collection. <laughs> What we also discover is an incredible conservation program with honest, transparent management. CITES species burger, anyone? Would you like your steak rare or just endangered? I'm passionate about food and it's important to know that all these, are, whether a browser and the grazer, you know, they all eat differently as well. And so we get this into the restaurants, into the mainstream, and that will allow the public to help in the conservation effort as well. So we could have a hog deer burger? Absolutely, yeah definitely. The hog deer breed really really well actually. They're, they're hard to transition into a new park but once they've uh, acclimatised they do really really well, a bit like muntjac. And again in the zoo side they've got these species that where they don't want to shoot them because they think it's conservation but actually if we use it as a meat, if you look at the pear david for instance, you know woven have about five or six hundred pear david and they cull 200 a year so there's no problem with culling a conservation species actually better for the species as you know good management really to allow the females to keep uh, breeding the man behind watatunga is edward pope just two years ago this rich pasture was full of onions and sugar beet now it's full of endangered species and a wealth of domestic wildlife flourishing in a low predator environment yeah literally the fence went up two years ago what did your fellow farmers um, so. say when you told them you're going to do this um, they're really inspired by it actually, they, they think it's an amazing thing um, and it's not that we've given up farming the rest of the farm, we're actually you know, farming that in a, in a more sustainable way. We're using drone technology and satellite technology, using a lot less chemicals and farming what we have um, well and, and sustainably and then turning places like this back to nature but not just UK nature, we're you know, working with um, stud books all over the world to uh, help populations stop them going extinct, really. Satisfying job. Yeah, amazing, yeah. Uh, every day is different. <laughs> well, when you work with animals, it, it really is. <laughs> There's a definite Jurassic Park feel from the electric interactive buggies to the safari lodges to some serious fences. So these buggies are all GPS controlled. They have the flat screen in them. Um, and as we drive around the reserve, they can give information on the screen and um, will stop people going off the beaten track so if someone tries to drive this buggy into a lake it'll stop the buggy and shut it down because it knows where it is within the reserve. Ed and his management team use thermal a lot. They have a thermal drone which tech mad Ed is more than happy to demo. Let's get this beast up in the air. The quality of these thermals has just increased so much that we're now able to do a, some very good identification with the thermal and that for me is, is so important. We have to dart a few of these animals, sometimes they're very quiet at night and the best time is to do it in the dark. So with the thermal scopes, you know, we want to know that that dart is going to fly true and, and hit the target. Um, and we want to know that we're darting exactly the right animal and we just want to make sure we're picking out the right one. Or if there's some grass in the way, a lot of thermals in the past couldn't identify the, the grass, they, they just picked up the heat signature of the animal because if a dart hits the grass it probably sets it off and, or you know, can ricochet uh, in the wrong direction. So for us here you know, in this conservation project, having these, these machines is, is absolutely vital. So how are our intrepid pith helmet wearing safari friends doing with spotting those species? Just to mention they do actually know there are two large water buffalo cows behind them. 
Not kingfisher, is it? Definitely not a kingfisher. <laughs> Obviously, is this one of the buskers? <laughs> Who are you out of this combo? Is it like when it ate our hot mum? <laughs> comedy, comedy for lines thrown in them to join them. It's just like my one liners, that's all I got. <laughs> Ryan has brought all the IRA kit for the Watatunga team to try today, including a product new to the UK that we're seeing exclusively for the first time. Hi, Mr. Charlton. Enjoyable <laughs> morning. Yeah, fantastic. Quite a spectacular place. It's, it's Norfolk's answer to Jurassic Park, I think. <laughs> we should be comparing your ability to spot and and identify compared to Paul with the binos, but to be honest, these have been very obvious, haven't they? <laughs> so quite a few of them. We've, we've been quite lucky so far. I think we've we've all spotted more with the naked eye than with binos or with uh, with thermals, but it's it's been a fascinating experiment so far, hasn't it? Yeah. What surprised you about the thermal? I mean, you're looking at animals you'd never ever look at at home. It's, I mean, little things like when the bongo were walking by and we could see the stripes on their coat and the, the white spot on the, on the face of the male. And the level of detail is, is incredible. But also as we've been driving through, when we've been able to spot the seeker hiding in the woods. It seems to me that everyone's got their, their way of using this as a tool, haven't they? It, it's great. I mean, even, you know, you've, you've got guys like this, you've got dairy farmers who observe their herd and are looking for inflammation of joints and that guides and steers their antibiotic use and you've got everything from that to insulation inspections to you know applications within the field and the field sports community as well and it just shows how this sort of technology now that it's become more widely available how useful it actually is. Is there any particular one of the, the IRA products you've been particularly enjoying using today? So this one, this is uh, this is an exclusive actually. So this is the only one in the country at the minute. This is the E6 Plus Spotter, the V3, so the, the third version. The most impressive thing is it's got an OLED Super HD display on there. So the level of detail that we're getting, you know, when we're saying we're seeing the the stripes on the coats of the bongo and we're seeing the white spot on its face, we're seeing that and, and recording it. So this this thing I've I've been using this thing now for three four weeks. It's astounded us every time we've been out with it. It's really 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 cool. What is refreshing about the conservation work being done here is the rounded thinking. They look after the little things, so the big keystone species like tigers have a fighting chance. So these are hog deer, and uh, there are less of these in the wild than there are tigers. But they are tiger food as well. So if we don't look after these uh, little animals, then our whole ecosystems can be lost. To most people in zoos and safari parks, they're little brown deer, so they don't have that sort of wow factor, sexy species that tigers and, and other animals get, and yet they're so vitally important. If we're not careful, this will be another species that uh, become extinct, and no one will have ever come across them or know about them. Save the tiger is sexy conservation and attracts cash. Save the hog deer to help save the tiger doesn't grab the headlines quite as much, but it needs to. And with education, that's part of the messaging Watatunga is trying to deliver. At the moment, we've got 22 deer species here, and we could do a lot more as long as we have, you know, the, the sort of deer parks within the UK taking on some of our surplus animals. Um, and that's the same in zoos as well. There's a lot of surplus in zoos where zoos need to, they have the manpower to concentrate on more endangered and, and animals that need more time spent. Whereas the, you know, the axis deer and the more common species, there's more barasinga now. But again, in the wild, they're very low numbers. They could go into deer parks. Um, great venison, we need to still cull them uh, and market them, be able to market them as a venison. Um, even though they're ascites animals, we should be able to still cull them in good management process as long as it's done right um, and educate people lovely meat it is and then the numbers will grow. And these deer parks can take, you know, big numbers. We could have two, three hundred barasinga, you know, in one deer park, which would be fantastic. Paul has known deer manager turned antelope wrangler Julian for years and as much as he loves the deer and antelope, Mr Childerley would happily visit here for the bird life. I see deer every day, so you know, it's like I've seen it before, but you're coming out, there's the oyster catchers on the, on the side, they come running down, nobody else notices them apart from me, but you know, yeah, it's, it all sort of knits well together, and the smaller things sometimes get forgotten, yeah, especially the bird life, that's for me, that's, that's the main thing. Have you seen a busted before? No, it's strange looking things, aren't they? Yeah, aren't they great? <laughs> just, just cannon fodder for foxes, aren't they, really? 
I mean, that's one of the biggest bonuses, isn't it? I mean, they've done a lot of fox control here, but otherwise it wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, fox control and spending a lot of money on and, and policing the fences around the outside, digging the fences in, tall fences, overhangs, electric on both sides. I mean, you know, they've gone to a lot of effort to keep things alive, really. So, yeah, take my hat off to them. What a hat it is. <laughs> That's not a hat. <laughs> this is a hat. <laughs> You've been very accommodating today. Thank you very much. No, pleasure, pleasure. Watatunga is a fabulous place to visit for a day's safari or for a longer break. And for this year in particular, it's the perfect staycation safari for anyone missing the veldt or savannah. Of course, it does not offer canned hunting or indeed any hunting. Instead, it promotes sensible management designed to benefit species that need benefiting. To find out more, go to watatunga.co.uk and for the IRA range, go to irauk.co.uk or check out Ryan's reviews on our Field Tester YouTube channel.